Hey you guys, how you're all doing today? I'm Anders R and uh, I'm still on my holiday. But yesterday I saw the new Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and I just wanted to give my uh, quick uh, thought on the movie. A little quick review. So sorry for the bad quality in this, but I'll be back next week uh, resuming my normal schedule as soon as possible. But yeah, let's uh, talk a little bit uh, about the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie, Volume 2. <sighs> what, uh, what I have to say about it? it uh, Story-wise, it's, uh, it's worse than the first part. Uh, it's, it's absolutely not a bad movie, but uh, the, the story itself, it felt really cliché. Everything, what you think will happen, it will probably will happen. It will happen. But the humor is actually a lot better. Uh, like from the five second mark, I already started laughing. The whole theater was laughing, and through all the whole movie, to every action uh, movie, so to every action scene, and everywhere they make jokes, jokes, jokes. Sometimes. A little bit too much, and sometimes also a little bit too ridiculous. And like one or two scenes, they are going really into the, the, the to the slapstick uh, kind of humor. That felt really, really a little bit out of place, even for this movie. That's all about humor. Now, so let's so let's talk a little bit about the new characters. We've got Mantis. It's the, the girl with the little thingies you see in the trailer. She actually is a nice addition uh, to this movie. She's quite funny. A little bit socially awkward. Uh, somehow, for some reason, she, she doesn't really understand uh, uh, humans or anything at all. Even though she has to be in touch with and emotions uh, with, uh, with the other character, uh, Ego. Which is actually is uh, Star Lord's uh, dad. He plays Star Lord's dad, and for him, yeah, he's he's boring. I, I don't know what else to say about him. He's just absolutely boring, and he's, he's so cliche. And I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say about him without spoiling the movie. But he's just a boring character, and his plans. No, no, no. <sighs> well, let's uh, talk a little bit about the special effects. The CGI, for some reason, it looks worse than the first part. In, in some in some parts, you can absolutely see you, that is it's fucking fake. You come on, you, they come on this on this beautiful plants, and the instant the first thought was fake. Obviously CGI. You can see it. You can even see it on, on Rocket. Somehow, in some moments, it just looks worse than in, in the first part. I, I don't know where it's got wrong or, or if it's just me. But for, for me, it, it was really distracting sometimes. It's Even during the final climax, I thought, yeah, all green screens, only green screens. Uh, it just look. No. The first part. Was the CGI was looking wa way much better than in this movie. And let's talk about this. The, and then they even go a little bit like Fast and Furious style with the crazy explosions, you know, but, but they all, of course, survive. Like uh, there are like two or three s scenes where there's a, like a big explosion, and you think, yep. They should have been dead, but of course they are not, and uh, that felt really out of place in uh, in this movie. And I also know that is kind of cliche to say, but where the hell are the uh, the Avengers? I mean, okay, this takes place in space, but you also see some bad stuff happening on Earth. And you think, and I was thinking by myself, why aren't the Avengers here? You know. Don't, don't they don't even need any lines, just 
just let them show them. Uh, just throw a CGI Iron Man in there for like 10 seconds, and then we know that these worlds are connected. But but no, of course there are no adventures in it. So that was a little bit of disappointment, but not not a great big deal. But just throw it in there for a few seconds. I mean. And then let's, for the final part, let's talk about the after credit scenes. Now there are a lot of them. You, have, you have really have to sit to all of the credits to see them all. There are like four or five different of them. Most of them are just uh, humor sketch, sketches. And of course one of them is uh, setting up the tone for the next movie, I, I guess. I didn't get it, maybe the comic book readers will get it, what they were uh, talking about, but for me it was absolutely okay, whatever. So yeah, that was uh, pretty much it. So the story is pretty much cliche, uh, but the interaction between all the characters are just great. All the characters are great, except Ego, uh, Star-Lord's dad. I actually love the, uh, the 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 side story between Gamora and her uh, sister Nebula. I, I like that story more than the main story, and that's uh, kind of the big problem with this movie. The, the the main story is just absolutely cliche, and you can see it a mile away coming. But the humor is great. Uh, it's much better than in the in the first movie. So, how do I have to rate this movie? It's... Uh, I have to give it like a 7.5. It's... And then... I don't really like putting decimals behind uh, the point, so... I think ultimately I go with a 7. It's not a bad movie, it's... I definitely recommend go see it. But it's... It's nowhere near, the story is not as near as good as the first movie. The music is, is great again, and I'll give it that. But uh, the, 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 the characters, the interaction between the characters are great. Everything is great except the story, I thought it was really disappointing. So that's why I'm giving it a 7. I hope when the next uh, volume 3 is coming, they get a better story, because I thought this story was boring and cliché. So that was uh, my review, uh, I'll be home, uh, flying home in a few days, and I'll uh, go to my normal schedule as soon as possible. And I'll see you next time on a new episode of uh, Cinema Talk or whatever you're going to watch. And I wish you a great day. Bye. I wonder if they have a Derek Queen over here in Bangkok. <laughs>